everything uh, ready? Everyone ready? <coughs> okay. Well, welcome uh, to here to you, to Tickle. Let's uh, start. Yes, uh, okay. Well, I'm Jan Nijkman. Um, I work for ICT and I work uh, in ICT. That's uh, quite confusing, but also quite handy if people ask, what do you do? Well, I work in ICT. Okay, uh, which company? ICT? No, which company? Okay, ICT. <laughs> it's really the name as, as well. I think that's useful because, uh, well, there is no confusion. So what does ICT and mean? <laughs> um, the idea was simply that uh, we wanted to reserve the name ICT.nl so that if you want something in ICT, you come to our company. That's the original one. But recently, a few months ago, well, it's a little bit uh, dummy, but what is special about it? Well, the new shortage is now intelligence connected together. So since a few months, ICT means intelligence connected together. <laughs> So that's also the new brand, things will and change. And what was the original meaning of this? Just, just to Nothing. get the name ICT.nl. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was... So it's a backronym. It's an acronym. A yes. backronym. A backronym, yes. A backronym, yes. So something that had a meaning or had now no meaning and later got a meaning or another meaning. <laughs> so the backronym. Yes. It's there not are a <laughs> yeah, from the history on, uh, we have uh, offices, uh, well, in Holland, that's where it started, but there was also a division in Poland, uh, also in, uh, in Deutschland it was, but it's uh, recently sold now to another company, so it's not uh, ICT uh, anymore. We still do some work in, uh, in Germany, and recently we bought a company in Hungary. Mm. So, we are expanding, we are not known, we do all kinds of little projects, but uh, anyway, <coughs> little sidestep, okay. What I'm going to talk today is Unicode 8 for Tickle. Well, Unicode normally is something that it should just work, I mean, what's simple, you just have a set of characters and uh, <laughs> no one ever minds what's in that set and what isn't. Well, you have a library and that does sort of everything uh, correctly and I shouldn't worry about it. I mean, in Unicode you have uh, printable characters, non-characters, uh, uh, control characters, anything. Okay, we have a big set and someone knows which character is what and that's, that should be it. It should just work. Well, does it work in all aspects? If something doesn't work, well, someone has to look a little bit in it. Well, it happened that a few years ago I found out, well, not everything works as expected. So I dove into it and uh, found out that it's not as, as simple to, as one would maybe expect. So I'll talk a little bit about the history of Unicode. Next year it will be 25 years old. 2016 so it's quite a long time well uh, 25 years ago 24 then not many people heard about it so okay how did it come so far to to today last Wednesday Unicode, Unicode 8 was officially re released so it's now a fact it's now an official uh, standard since a few days I knew that would happen, it was promised for June, so I thought, well, that's a nice reason to come here and to tell a little bit about it. I had everything prepared, so Thursday I, did a, I committed it to the tickle trunk, all the tables and everything. So uh, next release will uh, move up from Unicode 7 to Unicode 8, it will be sure it will be in, because I already committed it. Uh, there are a number of tickle tips involved with that because every time when a standard change and you want to follow it, okay, uh, does it have incompatibilities that people should know about? That hey, my program uh, thinks that character is a is a space, and the next version it isn't a space anymore. Well, that means if my program depends on tokenation, divides strings 
uh, in spaces, if the definition of space changes, then my tokenizer will work differently. It's an incompatible that we have to take care of. So the tickle string functions, they depend on all those tables. So they might behave different between Unicode 8 and Unicode 7. But can we do that in a minor release from 864 to 867? Just move up to a major Unicode release from 7 to 8. Well, people might be worried about that. Well, they don't need to, but I'll come to that later. I also tell a little bit about SQLite and Fossil. Why? They have a small unicated table inside as well that is used in specific purposes. So uh, I already did a commit. I'm also Fossil uh, committer. So I already updated the tables there. So next Fossil release will also have the new Unicode 8 table. SQLite, uh, I'm not a committer there, so I cannot commit it. Uh, the table there is still Unicode 6.1 and I don't think that Richard Hip is uh, trying to follow it, he wants to take everything compatible well. That means stay with Unicode 6.1. Um, does it matter? Well, not really, I mean the characters that are added in that period since then. Uh, I, just, I don't think many fonts have them, so doesn't hurt anymore. So the Squalite Fossil, I will tell something about it, some conclusions, some uh, questions. Let's see, the history of Unicode. <coughs> well, the Unicode 1.0 was released in October 91, so that means ne October next year, 25 years old. It was just a group of people that joined, hey, let's, let's make one standard of uh, the, the problem is the encodings. You had some Europe encodings. Well, if you are limited to 265 characters, then well, all the characters in the world are more than that. So, okay, uh, in ASCII you only need 127, less than that. If you want accented characters, Okay, you get uh, ISO 55, uh, what's, what's it? 8859. 8859 dot uh, slash one, slash two, you have all kinds of variation. Well, that's, that's a problem if everyone puts some character in a different location. And the Unicode effort is started by Microsoft and Apple and some big company. Okay, let's group together something like the TCT, all kinds of individual people who all have their own opinion but they shared one ID, okay, we shouldn't try to have a different code point for each country, we must have one code point and we should all agree on that, okay, uh, the space, that's 32, okay, we already agreed on that, <laughs> but uh, every number, <coughs> and Unicode 1.0, they said, okay, we have, let's uh, uh, turn it up from 265 to 6,000, so 65,000 uh, char characters, so if you take two bytes instead of one, that's surely enough for all characters in the world, we can do everything with that, all the Chinese characters fit in that, so it will never be more than that, and that's Unicode 1.0. Microsoft embraced that, they think, okay, uh, Windows 95, let's get Windows 2000. Uh, we just uh, enhance it to 16-bit instead of uh, 8, and in the far future, it will be always be enough forever. Um, well, and then they started, okay, which characters should we put in which thing? The Chinese characters got there, the Japanese uh, uh, got there, it started filling, uh, until well, 2.0, uh, of course, they made some mistakes that were incompatible, and uh, uh, 2.0, and then they started thinking, hey, maybe that 62,000, it's not enough, it's going so fast, uh, we, we will have short uh, of that, so what should we do? And then they invented the planes, so they, they said, okay, we if 65,000 characters is not enough, then make 17 different planes of 65,000 characters, so then we have 17 times as much characters available, 
or how do we do that? They divide, they uh, reserved 2048 characters as 38 characters. So just take uh, uh, one character set of 1024 and another character set of 1024, you have then 2 times 10 bits. You have 20 bits to form a character or a character. So this way, by combining two 16-bit values, you can form uh, at 20 bits, so 16 additional planes besides the original one. They didn't want to duplicate it that you don't that you have a two byte. They want to forbid that uh, combining two of those circuit characters that you could form a non-surrogate character as well. So that means the character space is multiplied by 17. Well, until now, only uh, plane 1 and plane 2 have, have characters filled. 3 and later than that are not used anymore. So I think, I think that's enough for the Earth. Okay, if we start uh, contacting aliens that have their own scripts, it will not be enough. But for the Earth, I think 17 planes will be enough uh, forever. I think so. Uh, that's about the jingles. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what I said. If we start encountering... It is defined. Yes, it exists. Klingon exists, and then maybe it, if it has a limited character set, that's okay. But uh, for the Earth, the next hundred years, uh, I think it's enough. Uh, let's think about later. So I s I'm satisfied with that. Uh, in my lifetime, I won't have a problem with, uh, with that. So Unicode 3, that was the, when those uh, surrogate characters were invented, the 17 planes. But there were not um, any characters. It was only defined there will be more planes. But there were not any characters in that planes uh, yet defined. Uh, Stickle, I don't know if you remember long ago, around the same time, I think it's 2001, I don't remember, when Tickle 8.1 came out. Tickle 8.1 also embraced Unicode 3. That was in fact the standard. But because there were no characters outside the plane, outside the base plane, uh, they said, okay, uh, 16 bits is enough. There were all, all kinds of functions to convert strings to an internal representation of 16-bit characters. For example, if you do string index 5, it will convert it to Unicode and then take the 5th in index and that's the character it will be returned very efficient under the assumption that 65,000 characters are enough so this Unicode 3 is, is a big milestone in fact that Microsoft and a lot of uh, companies Tickle 8.1 they all announced okay now it's stable enough we can say it's an international standard that's getting acceptance uh, well, a lot of time passed, nine years, until Unicode really became accepted. Well, after that there was a minor release, 3.1, 3.2, with some changes. Uh, it became 4.0, I don't remember what was the main thing, why they called it a major release. Uh, I think that went up until 5.2 I don't know exactly what are in those two releases but it was in fact advancing the, the same way adding more characters correcting some mistakes oh that's print that's is it, is it a printable character is it a control character uh, there are some changes in that but people also start to change to think about compatibility how are we allowed to go from 3 for 4? How many programs are we allowed to break? Um, and then they started to think, well, if, if, for example, Tickle went from 7 to 8, anyway, you have to, if more and more people start using it, 
you are limited in the things you can do for compatibility. So gradually they start to make more and more rules, promises about the future things. One thing they promised, for example, there will not be any more space characters. Because if you add a space character in the future standard, well, it's kind of important in tokenizing. So such kind of thing, uh, rules are set up that people can promise uh, upper or lower case, for example, that, uh, you, that there will never be an uppercase, lowercase um, conversion between existing characters. So two characters that already exist, they can never be, if they were not already, become each uppercase, lowercase uh, uh, variant when new characters arrive. Okay, it can be an uppercase variant of an already existing, but all kinds of compatibility rules they defined. And when you have such uh, <coughs> compatibility rules, then you can say, okay, so we can just go up to major versions, so with 6.0, uh, no, with but after 6.0 there are some release, but after that they say, let's get more gradual releases. Every year, in the middle of the year, in June, we will bring up a new major release, so we know that in June 2014 will be 7, June 2015 will be version 8, June 2016 will be version 9. So people know when a new release comes out every year, and they know, okay, it's called version 9, version 10, uh, and so on. Uh, it allows for some incompatibilities, but we have to basic rules that it's really not incompatible. For practical use it should be compatible. All the mistakes of categorization we did in the past, we learned from that, we won't make that mistakes anymore in the future. So um, we can do that. People can trust that if you upgrade to another Unicode release, uh, it will be compatible, don't worry about it. So you don't need to worry that Tickle 8, but Tickle 865, it has Unicode 8 tables. Uh, I don't think you will notice any incompatibility with uh, Unicode 7. All your programs should just uh, work as they do now. All the existing test cases just pass, so it's no one, I, I believe that no one should notice. Okay, what changed in Unicode 8? The two most important things are uh, lowercase Cherokee syllables. Well, very important that they were added. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't use it, but there's some special about it. Normally, when they add characters to Unicode, the, they started adding the lowercase, and sometimes they forgot, ah, oh, we forgot the uppercase, and then in a later version, the uppercase characters will add it. Well, if you do, for example, in SQLite full text search, normally what you do is you have a database with words, and then when a new text enters and you want to search the words, you convert all every word you extract from it, convert it to lowercase, and then you search in the database if it's there. Maybe the database was filled with an earlier Unicode version, then your own program and later upgrade it, but you still you don't want to convert your database with every uh, a new version. Well, what happens with the Cherokee syllables? Well, in Unicode 3, the uppercase characters were added and they forgot the lowercase. And in this version, they add it. So that means if you have that thing convert, uh, if I have a database with Cherokee characters, filled with Unicode 7, all are converted to lowercase, but lowercase didn't exist, so they are uppercase. If you then upgrade to Unicode 8, and I get some CLP characters, I convert them to lowercase and then search it in the database, it will never be found. Because in the early Unicode, there didn't exist any uh, lowercase CLP. So that means that you cannot use that method anymore to lowercase if you do 
want to do full text search. Well, does it matter? In fact, um, Unicode doesn't define to lower, it defines a function case fault. That means uh, convert your character to a case insensitive, case invariant form. And in the history, it's this function was equivalent to two lower case. The case fault function was just the same as two lower. Well, since Unicode 8, it's not anymore because the GOT syllables, they will be, if you use the, the case fault function, it will be converted to uppercase. Is there a case fault function in Unicode? No, there's, a, there's only a two lower. So that means starting with Unicode 8, yeah. it should be worth a tip to add that case fault function, it's the same as to lower, except for those pure key characters. Well, uh, <laughs> that's, that should be done, it's simple. Uh, I don't think anyone really cares if I provide a tip for that. Uh, no one would uh, vote no, but it's, uh, it's a minor thing. And so that's one change that's not trivial, but uh, that's special for Unicode 8. Another one are the emoic characters. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I already put one there. Mm -hmm. ah. Here is one. This is an example. But how can a character be several colors? Because the glyphs are only, you know, one stroke or one, one color. Uh, because that depends on the font. If you have a colorful font, then uh, you can do that. Is uh, it possible in ordinary font technologies to have Mac colored emoji icons? Yeah, you, you have it on Windows as well and, and Linux if you use no, the, no, the Google thing. Image, it's not an image, it's a tool. Well, this is, this is inspired space. by uh -huh. applications yeah. like you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you yeah. have uh, WhatsApp, and with that you can write text. And you also have a menu in which you can select a smiley and a hand up. And but is it really a character or is it a little graphic? Now it's a little graphic. Why? Because there were many things didn't have a corresponding character. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine if you have WhatsApp, you write a little message, and the other person doesn't have WhatsApp, but another application that uses other things, the characters are named like hands up, hands down, smiley, frown. They are names, they express mm. emotions. It's a Japanese idea, the Japanese started with that. It's, uh, emoji is a Japanese word. But that means that there are kinds of little pictograms, but characters are also a pictogram. The A is kind of pictogram, we see it and we know, hey, that's a character yeah, A. But the glyphs are normally only lines in font technology and they don't have any color information you can yeah. color any character any that's color true. in but, yes that's true word but word unicode word. only defines which number we assign for some character it doesn't define how you should show it how we should render it mm -hmm. that's font part but that's not part of the unicode standard so it just says if you have an emo character that says frown or sad, or things, then every application has its own rendering. One likes to show it like this, another likes to show it like that. But it doesn't matter that it shows different, the meaning is important. So we have one code point. So this allows different applications, uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, uh, all those kinds, to use the Unicode characters mm -hmm. to interchange them. There was not a standard for that. I think that's the motivation why they looked, okay, uh, all those applications, which characters do they have, is there a Unicode character for them, and those who are missing, let's add them. And that's what happened in Unicode 8. Mm -hmm. Oh, you had a question? I can ask it there. Okay. <laughs> maybe it was, maybe it, will already, it was already answered or it will be, okay. Let's see. And one thing in the stability policy, that's what I said, what incompatibilities. With Unicode 8, it's not true anymore that you can do a two lower case in, in get a, to, kind, to get a kind of case invariant character. So it now clarifies that the case fault function 
can perform a two upper in some situations, uh, it does. So if your program uses two lo function two lower, it means your program is wrong. Okay. Uh, one thing to mention for Unicode 6, I already did it at 6.1, is the version used by upstream SQLite, full text uh, search. Uh, Tickle has their own T version of SQLite. Well, uh, what happens there is I put together a separate fossil repository in which I have SQLite in a separate branch and the trunk I follow the T version there were various uh, modifications from Portal started with that the build system was not up to date with the latest T so they were not following the T standard very closely uh, so many times we have to make updates to Tickle in order to distribute it together with Tickle 8.6 and well, we have a fossil repository now where those changes are uh, done. Well, if Tickle is integrated with, if SQLite is integrated with Tickle as one battery, uh, battery uh, included. distribution, included, yeah. battery included distribution, then I think SQLite should at least use the same characters as Tickle does. So. Uh, in that repository, I also committed the Unicode A. That means that the next T version of SQLite, uh, which one is it, 3811 will it be, will also contain the Unicode 8 instead of Unicode 6.1 the, as the original, uh, as the upstream uh, version. It's a pity that SQLite doesn't follow it. It's easy to regenerate the tables. Uh, but uh, I can imagine the worry about compatibilities. That's okay. And one thing I already said that uh, Unicode promised to not add any space characters anymore. They didn't promise that they will never remove space characters. I think it's kind of strange, but in Unicode 6.3, the Mongolian vowel separator character was removed uh, as being a space. They did it once more with one other character, but that was before 6.1. They removed uh, two characters already removed. They were a space in the past. They are not a space in the current. Uh, I think that's a mistake. Even though Mongolian vowel separator it doesn't have space in the name, so maybe it was a mistake to call it a space. But then, in order to correct it, maybe they should have done deprecate this character and get another character named Mongolian space separator. That would be, so I think it's rather strange that in such a late Unicode version they removed it. That inspired me for tip 413, and that was one of the tips I talk about. Okay, U Unicode 3. Go, I, will, I want to go backwards in time, eight, six, three. That was the important thing that was included in Tickle 8.1, 1999. Accept the correctors uh, for the new code place. How is it integrated in Tickle? There are two Tickle scripts, uniparse.tickle and uniclass.tickle. If you provide uniparse with official unicode tables that they provide, that will generate all the source code for Tickle. You just run that, uh, just copy pasting, and all the tables get replaced for Unicode. There is a second one, uniclass.tickle. If you update those tables and rebuild Tickle with those new tables, then uniclass tickle must be run with the new Tickle version, and then it's uh, looks for each character, is it a control character, is it an alpha character, it goes to the whole table and it creates the source code for the regular expression code. In the tickle regular expression you also have the same character classes and the second one is not to update that. So it's kind of 
process. I did it a few times now. So, uh, okay, it's my, it appears to be my work now to upgrade that with every tickle. Always. <laughs> Here you have an uh, example from the, uh, the Unicode label. It's part of TK, the, the demo suite that you can see that if you have the right font, then uh, since Tico 8.1, you can do all, kind of all this. Okay, then the tips that are involved with Unicode. There are quite a lot, some are done. Uh, tip 318 was a qu a quite old. It was a tip that said, those, this, this, this characters, three different characters, they are as defined as being a space, but the is space function of tickle returns false. So that's wrong. So let's add them. So this tip, it, it was not fired by me, someone else did that. They, uh, uh, it was put up in a, in a vote, and in fact those three characters mentioned in that tip, one of them was wrong, it was not defined as a space by Unicode, it just had space in the name of the character. So, uh, it was accepted, I also voted uh, yes for that, knowing that that one character was wrong, but I thought, well, okay, uh, if people are getting aware that Unicode does this kind of changes following it, it's, uh, it doesn't hurt, we can still correct it later. So, I started to think, Okay, what more should be done to correct this space is what incompatibilities. And just to be s sure, it's better to fire a tip uh, for that. So I filed a tip for 13, Unicode support for string is space and string trim. The reason for that is the tickle function string is space. What it does is just tells one or zero as the answer depending whether it is a space or it isn't a space. You also have the trim string function that trims spaces, it removes spaces from the beginning of the string and the end of the string. Intuitively, you would expect that those two functions have the same space set. Any space that returns string is true, a space returns true, you would expect that that characters will be trimmed from, from the string if you do that function. Well, that was not true. The difference was simply, well, they didn't have the same character set. I'll talk about, it's, uh, so this tip is accepted and it's done in Tickle 8.6. Uh, I found another tip, extending Unicode littles past the BMP, 388. That tip was about uh, <coughs> preparing for multiple planes. The stand in Tickle, what we had as backslash uh, minor U and then four characters, hexadecimal. You can define a Unicode character but for that, but it's not enough to go higher than that. So, I, so that tip basically defines, you can also use a capital U and then more than four uh, characters and exactly the rules. So in fact it changes the, the parser, the backslash parser, such that it can handle more than, more than 65,000 planes. If you go higher than that, it can handle that, but it will just replace it with the unknown character. So it's not really useful, but at least those were the things that could be done uh, in a compatible way, uh, already preparing a little bit for uh, more than one plane. And then I found, so those two you can see succeeding numbers. Uh, I started very early, I just submitted those two tips, okay, if you want more planes. What changes will be needed? Some of them will be compatible other one will be incompatible. So, okay, the compatible ones I put in 3A8, the incompatible ones in 3A9. And uh, my goal was 3A8 to get it in 8.6. And 3A9 cannot be in a minor release. So uh, if someone would file that tip for 8.6, I would vote no for it. It's simply incompatible. 
but it might be in 8.7 and I think this tip is the main release why I think there will be 8.7 uh, tickle 9 will be far away there's no pressure to bring that out until the 64-bit platform will get more widespread and people will really need huge amount of memory but getting multiple planes really the unicode i think there will be pressure earlier than that and it that doesn't need the 64-bit enhancement so i expect there will be an 87 in which this tip will be accepted i hope but the tip is there there is a branch uh, uh, tip 391 impl implementation that is fully done yes what does it make incompatible um oh, that's in a later sheet yeah. uh, i will come back to that what's what's what it will be making incompatible uh, in the future, why, why not eight? Why, why don't you start? It should be eight, but when I wrote it, six was the latest uh, release. <laughs> but I will change the title, title to eight, of course. The, the previous definition was Unicode 3. That was still the official standard followed by, by Tickle. And six was already a great enhancement, but uh, the title is wrong. I will make it eight, and if nine comes out next year, I will make it nine. But <laughs> <laughs> this tip, I don't have any hurry to get a vote on that because I know it will not accept it. Will, be, will not be accepted for eight six. I wouldn't accept it myself. So it means uh, it will be for eight seven or nine, whatever comes first. And what then that version is near near it can always be voted on. It has no hurry. It's it's in a sleeping state. I don't worry about it. I don't work on it. Implementation is ready. It uh, it will be done. The most important change are the UTF to Unicode car and the Unicode car to UTF. That are the two functions that will start to behave differently. Um, well, the reason is because UTF, UTF characters in Tickle can have maximum 3 bytes. Well, after this change, that's not enough. You need to turn it up into 4 bytes. It's not difficult, just train the 3 and a 4 in some header file, that's all. And as long as applications don't use the new Unicode characters, it will be never be more than three, but, but now it's guaranteed that the UTF characters are maximum three length. Well, that guarantee will be gone as long as you introduce that. So that's one of the incompatibilities. If I have a little array of three characters and I use that function, it could be an array overflow. It cannot happen now, but you should make it four. It's a constant in a header file, so it's easy, but it is an incompatibility. Another one. Uh, it is Windows specific. Uh, Windows, you have the choice instead of a main to use the W main with white characters. Normally, if you have a main program, you have argc, argv, and those are characters. Okay, if you run a program with command line arguments, that means you cannot do that in Unicode because you are limited to the character set, the system encoding of that platform. And, and on, on Windows, well, there are many characters not, not in there. So in 8.6, uh, the whole interpreter is, is compiled in Unicode mode, so that W main is the function. Uh, I didn't bother to write a tip for that, because it's just an internal thing that now the command line accepts Unicode characters. So if you run the tickle shell in your command prompt and you put Chinese characters in it, in 8.6 it will work, in 8.5 it won't. Yeah, but the, but the command line, the DOS box doesn't even support that, because they yes, still have right. only 8-bit characters. It's a code page 850, which is even different from the GUI in Windows. That's true, but from 8.6 the DOS box supports it. 
You mean tickle does it, but the command from a Windows, how does it do it? The tickle command prompt from Windows supports it as well, okay. as long as your uh, program is compiled in Unicode. Mm -hmm. So try it, just cut and paste some Chinese characters yeah. as a command line arguments in 8.6 in the DOS command board. It works in 8.6. <coughs> so the DOS command is capable of transporting this into yes. the domain? Yes. There's uh, another thing about Windows. Uh, there are two functions, get command line W and command line to RPW, yes. which work with the Unicode command line, regardless yes. of whether main or W main was called initially. Well, and, uh, that's true, but those functions are not needed anymore. If you compile your program using W main, main then the Unicode command line will get in directly. Those functions that you mentioned, they were meant for compatible with Windows uh, uh, 95, 98. Huh? Uh, there was well, there did, they didn't support Unicode yet as a command line. So doing this the correct way, then you don't need those two functions anymore. There's one more thing about get command line W. It gets an unpassed Common line, which uh, can be useful for some applications. The problem is the Unix tradition is uh, passing to main an array of strings broken down by the shell. And how many windows you don't have? Windows, shell. there is an original common line with all spaces, all separators. Intact. I know, but under Windows, what you do if you compile a Windows program. You name it W main and then you link in the runtime library. Under Windows, the runtime library has various versions. The one for Microsoft by default doesn't pass the command line, but you can you have a compiler option in which you can link in another runtime that does another parsing. To make it worse, the Mingway compiler they think, hey, we want shell escape, we want the command line passing on. And they hadn't, didn't have a possibility to switch it off. And that's why in the past that function get command line was used to get the unpassed command line, no matter how I link it. But those were all workarounds on the basic error. You should use W main and you should use a non-passing runtime. Well, all, I studied that and all that has been corrected now. So it means if you build Tickle with a standard make files, all the options that tell, okay, we want a runtime that doesn't do additional parsing. So if I get a star in, I get a star in and it doesn't expand that to what's, what's uh, on the line. There are test cases for that and I'm glad that that workaround of the function that you use, get command line W, not needed anymore because the bug under it is fixed. Sometimes it's absolutely needed. For example, what if we want to start a sub process with exact command line which your program received initially? That's a common thing when we write an application as a wrapper but around some other application. Well, the the absolutely correct way to do this on Windows is get a uh, raw unpassed command line and start the sub-process with the same unpassed command line. Well, that might because be true, but Tickle, then, then Tickle has to do their own passing of well, the quotes and of that command line and you still have to uh, you still have to arrange to do that uh, correctly. I think it's much better to follow the Microsoft convention and uh, don't pass it, just get the individual. So let the library divide that into the separate arguments and each argument is passed unmodified. That's something that you should be able to, to trust on. There are test cases in the Tickle core. They are not changed for a long time, but they assure they were done when the Mingway compiler uh, they, are, they added that command line parsing, which Tickle didn't want, that parsing broke things. 
if you have a star in the command line then you are gone because if the shell expands that then you will get multiple arguments and then the argument count doesn't match anymore that's the most important mistake that was done in the past but uh, I think it's it's correct there's there are test cases for the command line parsing and uh, well at least that's my opinion that I don't want to touch, touch it anymore so I didn't bother to write a tip for that it's an implementation detail that no one would notice it was a quite logical step uh, actually necessary it was necessary because because that was uh, an exception to, to the whole Unico stuff. Yeah, that means, but I think so it's useful that in I6... You, you, could, you couldn't specify command line arguments in Unicode. So that was actually a, a bug. It, it was a bug, so that's for... Well, I can... Uh, if I file a tip for that, people will say it doesn't need a tip. But it's an uh, yeah. implementation detail. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I just committed that before H6 in the... And the, well, it's got working. Okay. Uh, and it's it's in now, but it also means that the command line uh, is Unicode capable now, and it wasn't in 8.5. Yeah. So it's uh, therefore I wanted to mention that in this this list, Unicode it looks so simple. Hey, some table, but <laughs> quite some involvement. Uh, excuse me. Uh, how about the other platforms? Uh, how about uh, Linux, for example? That is absolutely Windows specific. This is Windows specific, yeah. yes. But for Linux, most Linux distributions have UTF-8 yes. as their default character set. So just if you transfer everything using UTF-8, that's no problem. Okay. Then you don't have to do anything special. Yeah, okay. yeah. So gradually that will be solved uh, without any trouble. It's just that Windows chose to use 16-bit characters in the command line. If they would have chosen to use UTF-8 for that, it you would have been a problem. On Linux, I'm allowed to specify a command line argument in the UTF-8. Yes. And that is then automatically converted internally to, to... If the system encoding of Tickle is set to UTF-8. Okay. If it's set to some other value, then of course it will be interpreted different. But Tickle has a system encoding uh, uh, setting that yeah. needs to be correct. And if it's UTF-8, okay. you can transfer everything. Okay. <coughs> there was another question? Yeah. So, on the Windows side, there is a, in version 8.1, I think, Tickle 8.1, there was a whole stuff made to support the ANSI and the Unicode system calls and all this T-char stuff and so on. Mm -hmm. Is yep. this stuff still there? Is it still needed? Is it? It's gradually been moved in the uh, in the period up to eight six. I looked at several uh, code, and if there was an if uh, one, if Unicode, then do that, and if don't, do that. Uh, I, all this stuff is removed in 8.6. All the, it cannot be switched to non-any code anymore. The whole program is compiled in Unicode mode, and that's it. In 8.5, there still was the promise, or the, it was never really promised, but they said we don't uh, support Windows 95.98 anymore. But it was not really, if you say I don't support it anymore, then you can remove all things use, using to, to support that. So that's done in 8.6. All the things is removed. So it will never run on 95, 98. 8.5, it could be done. I never tried it, but if someone wants to run 8.5 on Windows 95 or 98, might run. I don't know, I didn't test it, but it will be switched to non-unicode mode and uh, maybe there are some violations, some functions that the switch is forgotten, but you can add it. It would be possible. I think it's a socket driver, there are commands which don't exist. Could be. But for H6 it's uh, impossible. Uh, all, all this is out. I'm glad for that. There's one other tip that I forgot. It's, eight, it's 4.25. The nationalization of default panic callback. The panic function, it just writes the bytes to standard out, of 
course, under windows, you don't always have a standard out channel. If you have a GUI, then it doesn't get anywhere. But then it should write it to the console or to the debugger or something uh, like that. And I wrote a tip for 25 to fix that. There's also an implementation uh, for that. Uh, I don't know if I will still bother to file that tip for 8.6, uh, but that means that the, the panic message from Tickle will be allowed to use Unicode uh, characters as well. I don't know if really anyone cares, but okay, <laughs> it's the final step, I think, one place where we don't follow the Microsoft guidelines. This is how you should uh, panic, we don't follow uh, that. So, very easy implementation, but so one, two, three, four, five tips. <laughs> wow. Six. Yeah, the, that it's one is not a, not a tip. I just did it because it's implementation. Okay, one tip that's worth mentioning. Consistency between the term stream, string trim, and string space. That was one tip that was accepted that was kind of strange. Uh, I would expect that any character for which string space returns one will be trimmed by string trim. I had a look, look at that correctness. Unicode defines a kind of white space property and it has a table which characters has the uh, white space property. And uh, I already said that Unicode didn't promise they would never remove space characters. Well, in UD Unicode 3, they removed uh, the zero with space uh, with this code point 200B. They removed it from the space set. Before that, uh, it was a space. After that, it, is, it isn't a space anymore. Well, I think there's space in the name of the character, so I would expect it to be a space. Why did, uh, why did I remove it? Well, if you have a zero with space, you don't see it. So, why is it there? It's in fact a kind of control character. People can use it to say, okay, I have two words that are joined together, but maybe in some languages, I want to say explicitly that they are two words even though the, if there is no space with it. So it's in fact a kind of control character, <coughs> like uh, uh, one that is invisible, but it says something about the surrounding characters, but a different control character that is promised not to have any visible display. It's a zero with space, so it's guaranteed that, uh, for example, for carriage return, you cannot have a small 0C or some angular or something for carriage return. This is a control character that has... But, but actually this zero with space allows in text for a line break. And you use it when you, for instance, have long uh, names uh, of functions, for instance, when you describe functions of, of code, and then you write it in a text in a text document, then you include zero with space wherever a new word begins. In camel case, you capitalize the following character, yes. but you don't want the hyphen included at the end of the line yes. when the line breaks there. Yeah, that's and true. therefore, it's a zero with space, and it can be discussed whether it separates two words because it even separates two lines in print. Yes. So. So that means it's quite dubious. Should it have been removed? The thing is. I would expect Unicode to promise something that is a space will always be a space. Otherwise, any tokenizer will have an incompatible change. And they have the possibility to deprecate characters. So if you made a mistake in one character, then you should deprecate it, introduce another character, that character with the correct things, and you won't have any incompatibilities. That's the thing that the Unicode Consortium has done multiple times. So why did a Unicode 3 change this character of being a space, of not being a space? It's, 
it's something I don't understand. I think it's a mistake. Uh, and even in the Mongolian vowel separator, I can imagine why it's not a space, it doesn't have a space in its name. Uh, it was promoted being a space in Unicode 4, and it was dropped being a space in Unicode 6.3. Well, that's strange. Was it introduced in 4, or no. did it become a space it was introduced became a, It became a space in Unicode 4. But it existed before? It existed before. Yes? Uh, another question. Uh, in, don't the TCL rules define white space strictly as space tab and new line? So do, don't we have a, a conflicting definition of white space already? Uh, it was, but there was already a tip. Tip 318 that extend default wire space in Symbiont ASCII. So before this tip, it was only the tab correctors, new line, space, non-breaking space. I think that's about the set, only the ones in the ASCII. What about the Dodecalide no though? What? What about the 12 TCL rules? Isn't, that, isn't it defined in those rules, the white space? Ah, but this doesn't affect the, the parser of tickle itself. The tickle syntax itself only defines, it doesn't use the is space function to define a space for its own pass parser. The, the string is space is only used for the Unicode definition of space, it doesn't involve the parser. So the tickle parser itself, it only uses tab correctors, control correctors, uh, and the space as separator. There's also the non-breaking space, uh, it's not a space in the tickle parser. But it is a space in the Unicode uh, definition. So that's separate. We don't uh, change the tickle pass itself. Uh, here that I, that, that, I, that I was. So the bomb is, is a space? In Unicode, the bomb was a space, but it isn't anymore. I think very early in Unicode 1 or something it had. But the bomb. It was a previously it was a zero with no break space. That's the original name of that character. And when they they uh, realized that there was little endian, big endian, you need a way to characterize the thing. They reused this existing character as a kind of okay. You can put that in front of it. And then you can easily see if it's Big Endian or Lindel Endian. And that's when I say, well, when we use it as that, it's in fact also a, a control character. And you shouldn't use it uh, uh, anymore. And also, those three characters, if you look in early net frameworks, for example, .NET had also, uh, for Microsoft also had a kind of is space function that returns uh, two for those uh, characters. For Intego, what this tip does is define once a space, always a space. So what we do is if if a thing was always was ever defined in any Unicode standard as a space, we will the, the tickle function string is space will always consider it as a space. It's a deviation from Unicode but necessary. Uh, the string case fault, I already uh, mentioned it as a possibility as a, for, uh, as a replacement for two lower, two upper. Two lower, two upper are clearly influenced by the upgrade to Unicode. There is a string is, all num, alpha, control, digit that tells, is some correct to a digit, is it an alphanumerical, anything. I already mentioned uh, regular expressions, you can have character classes. Uh, specified like this, all num that matches any alphanumerical character uh, as it is defined in Unicode, so that will be upgraded as well. That are the functions influences. SQLite has a, has a script make Unicode .tickle, and that transforms all the Unicode tables into source code that's included for you for UTR-Lite, it's used for the full, full text search. So the T version, I, uh, I ran that 
and it will have the updated uh, tables. Fossil uses Unicode for regular expressions. I don't know exactly, but, but it has a small regular expression uh, engine, and it has that Unicode tables. So uh, I upgraded that as well. The tables are simply copied from SQLite. So Fossil doesn't have its own scripts to generate a table, but okay, SQLite has simply copy it and it works. So it will be in the T version of SQLite 3.8.11. Uh, yeah, that's the. In fact, that's the end of uh, my talk. Unicode. I talked about the stability, how it's, uh, what compatibility you have in earlier, later versions. Article 8.1 follows Unicode the tables until the final one, tip 389, that really can use multiple planes. So I expect it will be in 8.7. Even if it arrives in two years from now, there's no hurry for that. Let's see. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> Do remember, uh, 12 years ago, <laughs> Right. My memory is not that long, but let's see. Oh. <laughs> Twelve years ago, Red Hat uh, modified uh, Tickle to use uh, 32 bits uh, for Tickle Unicare mm -hmm. it, uh, it was a great success and a great failure at the same time, because uh, the success part is that uh, characters outside BMP just worked, and the failure part is that uh, binary compatibility was broken for all precompiled extension. Uh, I think they referred to it, uh, uh, did they? Because I don't, I don't believe. Uh it's, I, th I think it would be a failure because it's not promised in Tickle uh, anymore. I know the code was built in, you have to compile the interpreter with a special option to, uh, to upgrade that. But I don't know if it even works. It might very well be that it doesn't work anymore if no one uh, uses it. So I would, uh, sorry Anton, but I would close the discussion now. We are 20 minutes over time, so every referee has a chance. And we have a coffee break, we have yeah. lunch, but we can discussion.